Hi folks, so today I would like to introduce you to a piece of software I've been playing around with quite a lot recently. You've probably already got an idea in your mind about what I'm about to talk about based on what you can see on the screen here. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit today about Delta Chat. Now this is not necessarily the most well-known piece of software, but I do kind of feel that more people should know about it because it's a really interesting concept and it's something that I really wanted to see put into motion for a long, long, long time now. Uh, in a nutshell, what Delta Chat does is that it takes email and it fashions it into a user interface similar to an instant messaging platform like WhatsApp, like Signal, like Telegram. That's it. It's an email client that just changes the uh, the way that we interact with, with mail. Um, and I think that it's uh, a really great idea for a whole number of reasons. Now, I'm a big fan, of course, open source communication platforms, but one of the perennial issues we have when it comes to uh, the success of instant messaging platforms that are open source, that are decentralized, um, that are you know that, that have software ethics or a high standard of software ethics, is actually just getting the general public on board, getting your average person in the street to actually care about you know software ethics to care about um, uh, to care about uh, federated networks to con you know to care about uh, moving away from centralized uh, data silos and all of this kind of stuff and to be fair most people fundamentally are not interested in learning about that it puts them to sleep and you know you can't expect everyone to really be completely informed on these you know rather intricate nuances of the internet and 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 you know our day-to-day -day digital lives however most people if have email like it is probably if you want to classify it as a social network it is the most widely used social network you can get now whether or not to, to what extent people use email is obviously uh it'll depend on um a whole number of factors. It will depend on perhaps like the circles that you travel in. Uh, I know among the people that I live and work with, email is actually still very, very commonly used. Um, but I'm sure that with many other people, WhatsApp might be more popular or Telegram might be more popular. So it depends a little bit on those kind of parameters. But almost everyone does have an email account. And what this does is that it, it just fashions email in a different way of looking at it. Uh, it does interact with any email account um, as emails, like messages are emails. So you don't. So so not only do other people not need an account. Or, I mean, there is no Delta Chat account. You use your email account. You can use a Postio account. You can use a Gmail account. Uh, I don't believe Proton Mail works or works particularly well with it because they don't allow IMAP access for. Um, I assume security reasons, um, but any other, um, and in fact, I've, I've set up a couple of burner accounts on my email domain uh, just so that I can demonstrate today's video uh, using the screenshot here. Uh, but yeah, you can you can send a Delta Chat message to to anyone with an email account, and they just get a basic email, and you get it in terms of you get it in a conversational format, um, and I think this is wonderful especially um, if you do use it on the mobile. So what I've got here is actually the Delta Chat app image. So I'm just going to click onto the website. You won't be able to see this, but uh, you can actually, get, this is available on the desktop. It's available. They've got a .deb Debian Ubuntu package. They have an app image, which is what I'm using right now. Um, it is available on FlatHub if you want to use the Flatpak. Um, so that's available there. Yeah, FlatHub. Um, it's also available in the AUR, of course, if you are uh, an Arch user or a user, user of an Arch-based distribution. You can get it for Windows uh, as an .exe file. You can get it as a Mac OS DMG file. You can get it on iOS in the, I believe it is in the App Store, um, but you can also beta test it on something called TestFly. I don't know how, how Apple works. Uh, and it is available on Android, not only on the Google Play Store, but it is available on the F-Droid Store. And on the website, you can download the APK itself. So that's pretty cool. Like it is available on almost any platform there. Now it's I, I will pr um, say that this is still in beta. And that's very important to bear in mind because I have come up across a few uh, issues. I've been trying it out with HexDSL, uh, who has come up against a few other uh, bugs here and there. 
Um, the bugs that I've I've experienced have largely been around the end to end encryption. Um, so don't necessarily, but it is beta, and they and, and and a lot of the errors that I've come across, a lot of the bugs that I've come across, are, have been recognised and are being worked on, uh, which is really all you can expect from people working on 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 software in, at a beta stage. In fact, that's really good. That the, the, they're you know sort of diagnosing and fixing uh, bugs. That's really what you want out of this stage of the process, anyway. So bear that in mind going into this that this is not a fully um, complete, you know, polished and 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 uh, off the line uh, product. This is still very very much um, in beta, but it's a working beta, like you can use it. Uh, I've been using it, of course, on the desktop here. I've also been using it on my work phone here as well. Um, and um, for the time being, I have turned off end-to-end -end encryption, so it's currently at the same level of uh, privacy and, and um, that you might expect from a standard email client. But the end-to-end -end uh, encryption, which does use autocrypt, uh, is actually pretty, you know, it seems pretty good. Like it, it does make, um, uh, uh, it does seem to be a, a really good solution here. Now, of course, one of the big issues with um, federated and distributed um, networks like this is that the line, the chain of trust is actually quite long, right? So if you're sending an email to another person, right, not only do you have to trust the other person, but you also have to trust your email provider and the other person's email provider. So there are four links in that chain, as it were, um where um where any any one of those parties could could you know leak whatever information that they they're handling um whereas uh if you look at for example signal which is open source but it's not necessarily open source in the spirit of the free software uh, ethos as it were uh, but it is open source it's not it's just not but it still is very much geared towards a uh, a siloed approach. Uh, it's very, you know, where where you have the signal servers and the signal operations, and they are the ones that direct everything, because they then can enforce a very user friendly version of that end to end encryption. All you've got to do is sign up to the service with your your phone number. So does the other person, and then you do have end to end encryption, um, and it can be enforced through a very simple network. Um, that's great, but it also takes a lot of autonomy away from you. Um, and I have always some, have somewhat been of the mind that if you genuinely want to maintain true, serious privacy, you're better off just keeping it off the internet altogether. Um, you know, talk to people in real life and 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 uh, and, and and bring back, you know, go old school as it were. Um, but when it comes to, um, you know, stuff in in the digital digital space. I personally, and this is very much a very personal approach to all of it, is I would rather support um, open source and freedom, and you know, like and, and federated networks and all of that kind of stuff before uh, before privacy. And that's not to say that privacy is important. That's not to say that privacy isn't essential, especially if uh, you are in in a you know, under, if you're living under, for example, an authoritarian dictatorship as a gay person. For example, um, you know that's th then again, uh, you know, privacy and um, uh, is going to be very, very much higher up on your, on your list of agenda. So I guess in in in, in regards to that, uh, I, I perhaps am speaking a little bit from a position of privilege. But uh, again, this is all the, you know. This is all part of the you know the free software ecosystem and the, and the free software movement and the uh, idea of of having digital autonomy. So it's not like they're necessarily completely separated issues. It's just my personal approach is that um, because I have the ability to sort of be open. You know, I've got a YouTube channel. You guys all know me, and, and I'm a very open person, as you know. Um, I'm going to choose the sort of the preference for for you know, you know open and open source and 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 distributing stuff to as many people as possible, uh, so that they can then use it as as they f see fit. I suppose that is my that's just my my the lens through through which I see it, and um, I, I am but one person with one perspective, and and that's all well and good. But anyway, that's a bit of a tangent for you. Uh, what I would like to say is that it is worth giving it a spin. It's not a perfect piece of software by any stretch of the imagination, but it's um, it's a really great idea. Uh, it's something that makes email a little bit more tolerable if you're more used to instant messenger platforms. It works with email clients. So I, I, I've had um, 
I've set it up so that you can actually I've been having a chat with with Hex DSL. Uh, he's just been using his email client. I've been using uh, Delta Chat, and we've just been having a, a, a conversation on email, like it's ju just like you you know you would expect. Um, so it's one of those amazing social networks that that doesn't require other people to be on it for you to get the use and and and, um, and benefit from it. And that's really good. And I think that's uh, that's a really good approach to how we can look at communications. Is you know your your you you don't necessarily have to bring people onto your platform. The platform is common. Uh, it's just you're engaging with the platform in a different way to how other people are. If other people want to use Delta Chat, fantastic. If other people prefer to use their own email clients, that's great as well. Now, when it comes to the end-to-end -end encryption options for Delta Chat, I do believe that you have to. I think it's a it's a Delta Chat to Delta Chat end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, I'm not 110% certain on that one because it does use AutoCrypt, which is a very you know like a bit of an open standard in that regard, if I'm not mistaken. But um, all things, oh, and it also has uh, like groups as well, so you can have email groups and things like that. So, for example, I've set up a a a, um, a, a group here with a couple of burner accounts, and I can just do, as you can see, it's just hello, hello, hi, hi. I can just put in a a message there, and it hops right up. So it's you know. That's about as fast as, as as you can expect. It works as fast as what you'd expect from an instant messenger platform. Um, but yeah, I'm really uh, I'm really thrilled with that. That's a really good um, uh, platform, and it's available as an app image, which I'm really getting into uh, app images these days. I might do a couple more videos on app app images and how I use them because I'm really getting a lot of benefit out of them. And uh, I, I think that app images is a cross platform. Uh, it was a cross distro uh, package management. Um, system it, they're really good and again with app images they they sort of almost use an, uh, an existing infrastructure where and and are genuinely decent um, and decentralized as well like you look at uh, uh, Flatpak for example which is an, an, a, a, a very good attempt a fantastic piece of engineering um, where you you have uh, you can have repositories from all different various sources, um, and and then people can can use you know and, and update their software using Flatpak repositories. But in practice, don't a lot of uh, software developers just go to GitHub, and then you've kind of got a very centralized platform, which is the thing that sort of kind of separated Flatpak from Snaps is that one, one, you know with Snaps they had a centralized store, so there was a degree of safety and curation there, but. Um, uh, but you did lose that little bit of end user autonomy um, that you then got with Flatpak. But the thing is with App Image is that you go to the developer website and you actually get the App Images. Like it's a genuinely um, distributed, it's genuinely decentralized because it you you it almost it fits within existing infrastructures, which I think is really good. You know, it's using uh, existing working um, workflows and paradigms. Um, and just making them better, which I think is much more smoother for the end user as well. It's great to be able to rewrite systems from the ground up in a much more efficient fashion, but then you have to teach countless people uh, the nuances of, of that system, and it can be very, very difficult. So using what we've already got, but making it better and refining it and looking at it in interesting ways. Uh, I mean, even with Delta Chat, I've been using this in ways that you might not necessarily expect. I've been using it to take notes because I take a note and I send it to myself and then it's on all my devices. Oh, I want to make sure to check out that video or, oh, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I want to take a photo and, and uh, of, of something important or something that I want to remember. And it's available on all my devices. It's just a really quick and easy, convenient way of, of, of note taking. Uh, a very informal way. You know, it's just like, oh, if I just want to write something down and make sure that it's on uh, and I'll be reminded of it next time I check my email. That's great. You know, that's great. That's wonderful, 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 wonderful. It's fantastic. I found countless use cases for it. It's a bit like sync thing. Whereas, where, whereas with sync thing, yeah, admittedly, you can sync a folder with another folder on another computer. But the amount of uses that you can actually find for that once you get comfortable with the piece of software is amazing. So, um, yeah, the website itself, I will, of course, link to it in the description, but it is delta.chat. Um, and um, uh, as I say, it's still in the works there, but there, it's pretty good with features. Um, the desktop version of Delta Chat does actually let you use... Um, it does let you have uh, switch. It does have account switching, so you can switch from account to account. So you can have a couple of emails uh, that are are set up there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a very simple idea. It's what if what if what if instant messaging, but with email. 
it's um yeah it's wonderful it's i i'm i'm really 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 glad that i found it i'm getting a great deal of use out of it and um yeah you guys i i recommend giving it a spin um but i've said it about three or four times already but it is in beta so take that into account but yeah link in the description thank you guys very much for joining me pleasure as always and um yeah until next time i've been chris Ware, and you've been awesome toodaloo